Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So I've been a Linux user for quite a while now and I have Linux Mint right behind me. However, I still use Windows in a virtual machine, but now it's gone to a point where that's not going to be enough and I need to set up a dual boot Linux Mint and Windows 10 system, but I didn't want this all on the same drive where I have to partition it out. What I wanted to do was have these operating systems on two separate hard drives. And so today I'm going to be showing you how I did that. Now before I get started, let's go over some key things that you need to have ready. And so the first and most important thing you need to do is back up all your data. I can't stress you how important this is, whether it's during installation or even afterwards because you never know what could happen, especially considering Windows 10 likes to install additional partitions on their drives. And so that's the first and most important thing. So the second thing you need to do is to create a bootable Windows 10 on a USB stick. Now I created a video where I show you how to do this within Linux Mint. If you wanted to see that, I will leave the link in the description area below. And then of course the final thing you need is a separate hard drive. And in my case, I got the Samsung 860 EVO SSD with 500 gigs. So this is where I'm going to be installing Windows 10. So now some additional accessories you might need if you don't already have it is first and foremost, you need some type of SATA cable so you can connect this to your motherboard. And then you might need some additional screws because you're going to be installing this onto your case. And so with all of those things ready, you can now get started on setting up your dual boot system. Okay, so before we install our hard drive, there are some additional steps we need to take. And so the first and most obvious thing you need to do is make sure your power is off. Then after that, check your motherboard to make sure you have a SATA port available. So that means you can install an additional hard drive. And then for your existing drives, be sure to disconnect your SATA cables because Windows 10 likes to install additional partitions and you don't want to risk having your existing data overridden or completely wiped out. Now you can have your power connection, just leave that installed. It's just mainly the SATA cables. And so I do have some other drives on the other side. Let's go ahead and check those out. Okay, on this other side, I have my other drive. And so you can see here, I have a four terabyte mechanical drive. And right below that, I have my new Samsung Evo 500 gig SSD. And as I stated a little bit earlier, you want to make sure that on your existing drives, be sure to disconnect the SATA cable. Okay, that's very important that you do that for all your existing drives. However, the Samsung is going to be the only one right now that is connected to your motherboard. So that's where we're going to install Windows 10. So after you get your hard drive installed, it's now time to get ready to install Windows 10. And the first thing you need to do is make sure your BIOS boots up from your USB stick and not from your hard drives. Now this is going to be different for each computer. And so I recommend that you do some research on the current motherboard you have and how to get into your system BIOS. For me, I have an MSI motherboard and I simply hold down the leak whenever I'm starting up my machine and then it gets into this menu. And as you can see here, I have the USB key as the very first thing that it tries to boot up instead of my hard drives. And so just simply move the USB to the very front and then you just save these settings and you could restart your machine and now it'll boot up from your USB stick versus your hard drives. Okay, so if your USB stick was done correctly, then you should get the Windows install screen. So as you can see right here, this is going to be very familiar. So we'll just go ahead and go through this. And so whenever we get here, uh, we are using the free version. So you don't have a product key. We're going to install Windows 10 Pro, but you can install whatever version you want. Accept Windows license agreements. And here you do a custom install. Now, in this case, it's really up to you. If you just want to make things simple, just install Windows on the entire hard drive. If not, what you can do is create different partitions. And so you could divide this up however you want. And so in this case, if you wanted to allocate, say, 15 gigs to a different partition, you could do that. Okay. And so once you partition this, you should see two partitions now and Windows has already created one for the system partition. And then you choose where you want Windows to be installed. And I would always choose the one that says primary. So we'll go ahead and go next. And Windows is gonna do its thing and start installing everything. And we'll just wait and see if this is done. 
Okay, so once you get to this part, you want to be sure to unplug your Windows USB install stick. So unplug that and let the computer restart. Okay, so once you have Windows 10 installed and you verify that everything works, um, it's now time to complete the setup of the dual boot of both Linux and Windows. So let's go ahead and restart our machine and get those things ready. So once you have Windows 10 installed, you can now reconnect your existing drives. Just go ahead and reconnect the SATA cables and then we're going to go into our BIOS to make sure it boots up from the right drives. So once you've successfully installed Windows 10, you can now reattach your SATA cables to your Linux hard drives. And after that, you can restart your machine. But the first thing you want to do is get into your system BIOS. So once you get in there, you see that more than likely Windows will be the first hard drive right after your USB stick. So it'll boot up Windows first, but that's not what we want. What I want to do is load up Linux first. And so if you do see your hard drive here, be sure to move it in front of the Windows drive. And if for some reason you don't see your Linux hard drive here, you could go to your settings, go to boot, and then scroll down and then go to UEFI hard disk drive BBS priority. So that's your boot priorities. And here you could change which one takes priority. And in my case, I have my Linux hard drive to boot up first and then the Windows boot managers second. So that's very important that you do that. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to boot up Linux. And that's, at least in my situation, not what I want. I want to be able to boot Linux first, and then I could choose Windows afterwards to boot if I wanted to. And so those are the most important things you need to do after reinstalling Windows 10. And then you just save everything, and now your system is going to go ahead and boot up. So after reattaching your Linux drives, the only thing you should see on your grub menu in terms of operating systems is Linux Mint. You see Windows here because I've already set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that in Linux Mint. For fast website hosting and top-notch customer service and features, check out SiteGround, the preferred service used at geekoutdoors.com. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. Okay, so now that we're back in Linux Mint, we want to set up Grub to make sure that we can see the new Windows hard drive and most importantly, give us the option to boot into Windows if we wanted to. And so the first thing we want to do is bring up our terminal to make sure that we can actually see the brand new Windows OS in a separate hard drive. And so what you have to do is put in sudo os-prober and then you have to put in your password. And if everything was done correctly, you will see the Windows boot manager right there, as you can see there. So that's very important. It's added to the slash EFI Microsoft boot. So that means that it is available and that means you can update Grub to make sure that it sees Windows and it gives you the option to boot it up. Now, before we do that, we want to make some edits to the Grub file because there are certain things that you might want to have whenever you are restarting your machine. And so what you need to do is go to this directory. It's in your file system. Go to etc default. And this is where the actual Grub menu is. It's right here. But the thing is, we want to edit this. Now you can edit this in two ways. You can edit this through command line if you like. So you just go to CD etc default. And then you could use whatever editor you want. You know, you can use something like nano. And then you could open up Grub. And here it is. But um, I don't like using these in a command line. So I'm going to show you how to do this using the GUI because I think it's a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and escape this. So let's go ahead and go back to this directory. And what you want to do in Linux Mint, just go to this directory, see where this folder default is, right click on your mouse, and then open as root. Then you just put in your password. And it's the same thing as you doing this in a command line, but the great thing is you have an easy GUI user interface and you can edit the files just like you would in any other file. So now that you've opened it up, this is very important in that if Linux is your only operating system, then this line right here, grub underscore timeout style equals hidden, it's not going to have this hashtag in front of it. So what that means is when you restart your machine, the grub menu won't come up unless you hold down escape. Now what you first want to do is put the hashtag in front of it. So that means the grub menu will come up. 
And then the second thing you want to do is put grub timeout to how many seconds you want. Now the default, if I recall, is five seconds. What I've done is set it to 10 seconds. So then that gives you time to choose which operating system you actually want to boot up. Now, once you've done all that and you've saved this file, what you need to do now is you need to update your grub menu. So we'll go back to our terminal and what you would type in is sudo update dash grub. And then you simply press enter. And once that is done, you can now restart your machine. And what you should see now is an option for Windows 10. So let's go ahead and restart our machine. Okay, so once you've set everything up correctly in Grub for Linux Mint, you should now see Windows Boot Manager as an option. And all we have to do now is load up Windows 10 and we can finish the rest of this dual boot setup once Windows comes up. So in Windows 10, the final step that we need to take is disable fast restart. Now, if you don't do this, this could cause potential issues whenever you are in Linux and you want to mount or see these Windows hard drives because it has something to do with the hibernation power settings of Windows 10. And it could also cause other potential issues in the future on your dual boot setup. So we'll go here to type here for search. We'll look for control panel. And once we are in control panel, you could go to system and security. And then here you'll go to power options, change what the power buttons do. And here it is. By default, it's turned on fast startup. So what you need to do is uncheck that and then save your changes. So by doing that, whenever you are in your Linux Mint operating system, you'll be able to see your Windows hard drives and they're mounted and you should have no issues. And so those are all the steps that you need to take to set up a dual boot Linux Windows 10 system on separate hard drives. So if you actually had any questions or thoughts on this, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you wanted to see my entire tutorial series where I show you how to move from Windows or Mac over to Linux, I'll leave that in the description area as well if you're interested. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you get access to additional videos and content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.